Clay, you wanna show me what you found? I lost something a couple months ago and I have not been able to find it. I looked everywhere. I'm buying time for me to figure out exactly what I'd wanna do with all these trees going forward. Welcome to A Simple Life. Today we are pruning the whole entire orchard today. We're gonna to be doing it differently than you would expect. It's the way it needs to be done for us. And what I mean by that is you'll find if you have a homestead or if you've ever had a homestead, then you know this, every homestead is just a little bit different. I have a certain need requirement. I need things to be low maintenance. I also need them to be kid friendly. And what I mean by kid friendly is if all my fruit is 10, 15 feet up in the air, then it's not very useful to me. It means I need a ladder to get it. If I need a ladder, it means I have boys that are gonna need a ladder to climb up there and get it. Or I'm gonna have to bring in help to pick. Herman was able to bring in help to pick for a long time. He got hobos to, to work for him. He gave them free housing and they worked for him. It worked for him, but I'm not doing that. I need to be able to prune and trim and pick all the fruit off of the orchard fairly easily. And right now, I have a whole lot of issues with trees in here. I have trees that are going down because of frost and snow. I have trees that are just dying because, well, they're dying. I'm not sure why they're dying. They haven't been maintained in years. I mean, here's a good example. Part of this tree is obviously dead. This one has some life to it, but most of the life is new life. Most of the other stuff is, it's all dead wood. The way we're gonna deal with pruning these trees is we're gonna pollard them. Pollarding a tree means you cut it off at about four to five foot tall and you allow the tree then to regrow from there. There's a few different methods that you can use that they've used over, the, over time. Most of these are methods that were developed back in Europe. There's a method that they would do where they would cut a tree down for timber, but they would leave about two to three feet of it or so, so that way growth could come back. So they would be using the existing root system to uh, fuel the growth of all the new shoots, which would in turn be more timber. There's also the method pollarding. Pollarding is usually, the idea for pollarding is that you make it high enough so that way goats and deer and stuff won't eat the new shoots. I'm not gonna go that high because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the final tree that we have to be about uh, six to eight feet tall. I really don't want the branches being much more than arm's length high. I wanna be able to prune the whole entire orchard by walking through it. I don't wanna have to get a ladder out. That is my goal is not to have to have a ladder to do, to prune and take care and maintain our apple trees. Because if I need a ladder, I'm wasting a lot of time climbing up and down a ladder, repositioning a ladder to get up and prune these things when I have way more than I need for now. There are, I have plans for these trees. And so I have way more than I need right now. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna thin them out. A lot of these trees are gonna be cut back pretty severely, but there's a method to the madness and it's gonna work for what we're doing here on our farm. All right, the boys are in my truck getting a little warm because it is a cold, brisk morning, but I'm gonna show you something. See all this fog behind me? Okay. If you look right up there, there's blue skies. And something that if you live in the Pacific Northwest, you know, the sun is melting all of the fog right off. All right, let's see. You guys doing okay? Okay.
Okay, I'm starting to get a plan. I'm starting to, I'm starting to see kind of the pattern, a pattern here. So I like taking them down about like this. Okay, I'm going to do my best to keep the wide branches going to the side, the main, like, or I guess trunks, okay? The trunks going to the side. I really wanna do that. I wanna keep these as thin as possible. And so what I mean by that is, for example, on this one, okay, th like there's technically four kind of trunks here, the way I'm gonna look at it. So I'll probably keep this one, as long as the wood when I cut this looks healthy, I'll keep that. I'll probably get rid of this one. And, and this one I'll probably get rid of. It depends on the wood. This wood up here is obviously dead. So when I cut through here, I'll see what this looks like. If it looks good and healthy, I'll keep this and I'll get rid of this and I'll keep that and that. So we'll keep three of the four. And this one I'll just cut off down here. And the same for this one. This I'll, I'll probably get rid of this because this looks like it's dead. And so I'm just doing that to each one. I'm just gonna go down the line and figure out what's healthy, what's not. I know a lot of people will take these down to just one. They call it like a trunk. Um, I, I These trees are, some of these trees are probably 40 years old. So I, I, need, I need to, I don't wanna cut them back too far, but at the same time, I'm also seeing some stuff that tells me that these trees aren't super, super healthy. So I'm hoping I can get some life out of them um, while I start adding new trees in between them. So while these are on the smaller side, I can start adding trees in between. And well, how do I know some of these aren't healthy? This is what I'm talking about. Okay, is that there's that's rot on the inside of that. Now, I don't know how far up it goes. And so some of what I'm doing here is just buying me some time. I'm buying time for me to figure out exactly what I'd wanna do with all these orchards or with all these trees going forward. Now, would it be by, would it be better just to like take the tops out of all these and just leave the main branches? Sure, but once again, I'm having the height issue. I do not wanna be climbing ladders. It's not that I can't climb a ladder. It's that every time I climb a ladder, that's time wasted where if I can reach the branches from the ground, I can walk down one of these with the boys. We can chip everything right there with a chipper and a quad and me and the boys pruning them and we're done for the year. I'm trying to make this so that way I can do summer prunings. I really would like to do summer prunings. It's much healthier for the tree than doing a winter pruning. And so that's kind of how I'm going down here. I'm just gonna go down and I'm just gonna, I'm, to be honest, I'm being brutal. I, it, it's, it's completely, I'm just, I'm being brutal about it. Um, I don't have any option. I, I, I don't have the time. I'm one man, I have a nine to five and I have two boys. That's a half a man right there. So we got one and a half men up here. And uh, it's just, I have to be brutal. It's, it's either, you know, you're, you're performing or you're not. And so um, it's, I just, I'm calling out anything that I think is got any weakness in it uh, when it comes to the branches, as well as I need height. I cannot have, I can't stress this enough. I cannot have uh, branches 20 feet off the ground. What is he running over? Sound like he drove over a car over there. That's what I get for letting a nine-year-old run an excavator. He's gonna come in and he's gonna remove all the branches from the middle and he's gonna start piling them on the outside for me. And we're gonna then go through and take all the good wood out that for smoking and, and stuff like that. Um, and then all the regular branches we're gonna pile and burn. I would typically chip them, but this is way too much to chip. We'll be chipping for days. So I'm gonna get working again. <laughs> crew working. Clint's running the excavator. Clay's helping me. He's actually in the process of moving the truck. And it's coming along. We're almost done with the first row. I think this is a, this was the kind of the slowest one. I had the learning curve is the learning curve. So we'll go from there to pick up. I'm getting a better idea of kind of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. All right. See you guys in a bit. All right, a little update. Clint's running this excavator almost like a pro. He's about to pull that T-post and tree and 
fence out right now, but the, the tree's already been cut off. So he's doing this like a pro. He's got me piles all the way down. He's cleaned all this up. The next, the next thing he's gonna do is he's gonna come down this row and he's gonna take all the brush from that row and from this row and he's gonna put it on that row right there. And so we'll just move down, keep going. We're about, this orchard, we're about, a, it doesn't look like we got much done, but we're actually about, I'd say a third, a third of the way done with this orchard. But it's coming along, it's gonna go, it's gonna work, Herman. Herman's gonna be upset, I know that, and it breaks my heart. He doesn't understand why I wanna do this. He doesn't understand that the cost of labor these days is just astronomical, and I can't make up the cost of labor for the loss in product I'll have by doing this. By doing this, I will have less product because my trees will be smaller. Over time, I'm gonna keep them smaller. I will have less product. It'll be high quality product, but it will be less product. But the cost of labor is just astronomical right now. It's, it's it, not only can you barely find people to work, when you do find people to work, you know, you're not getting the brightest and the best. And it's just part of this field. It's, it's very hard to find really good workers, unless you train them. Unless you train them, like that one. Well, and the one over there loving a dog, but he's pretty darn good too. They're both excellent. And so unless you train them, I just feel like you're not gonna have them. Um, and you know what, I'm training these boys and I, we were talking yesterday and I told them, you guys can be whatever you want. You do not have to stay on a farm. You don't have to stay on a homestead. Do whatever you want in life. But I'm gonna train you and I'm gonna show you what it means to work and I'm gonna give you skills that'll help you in every aspect of your life. And that's what this is all about. It's all about giving them skills so they have everything they need to go out and have their own adventure and they'll be fully capable. That's the idea. Um, I don't wanna raise couch potatoes. I'm talking about spending your 20s and your 30s and your teens sitting on a couch. That's what I'm talking about. You know, you're wasting your life. I'm sorry, it's brutal, but it's the fact. Go out there, enjoy life. And what I mean by enjoy life is go get some work done. Go learn what it means to put some blood, sweat, and tears into something and watch it fail and then get up and do it again and watch it fail and get up and do it again and watch it succeed. Build a family, build a life. Sorry, I'll get off my high horse. Get back to work. They don't pay me enough around here to talk. All right, see you guys. We're up on the fourth row, I believe. Well, I'm working the fourth and fifth row currently. I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like as we go. Okay, so it is, well, one thing it's cooling down. It is about 4.30, so we have another hour and a half or so to work, but we're at that golden hour where the sun is starting to set and the lighting is still nice and we can still see. A lot of these apple trees, um, 
you know, we're, you know, close to 10 inches uh, around in some places. If not, they were, they had multiple branches that were six inches or so. So each one kind of had to be controlled as it was being cut, which was, it was kind of hard to do because the branches are all tangled. So there was multiple times I had to drop like two, like trunks at the same time. It's been a real undertaking. Clint's been a champ at moving the, the debris and he's still doing it. He's consolidating multiple rows into one row. And so he's doing that. And Clay's been running errands for us, getting fuel and snacks and water and coffee and driving the Kubota around, getting all kinds of good stuff done. And so uh, we are really, really close to having all the pruning done. There's a few trees that I'm not going to be pilarding like uh, the rest of them. And it's this patch of Shiro plums down here. Uh, they are short enough that I can go in and really top them down aggressively and I think I can get them to stay at the height that I'd like. If not, then I will pollard them. Uh, I have some time to do that, uh, but we still need to get in here and get all these branches and everything out. It is different. It definitely feels different up here. Um, I, it's, it, All of a sudden you feel, you realize how big this orchard was once you started getting in it and cutting it. You're like, holy smokes. It covers about an acre. It's about one acre and the other uh, orchard is about one acre. So we're not gonna do it all today. I was hoping to get all 500 fruit trees done today. And I probably bit off a little bit more than I can chew. We're gonna get about 250 done. So we got about 250 done. I have another uh, 250 to go or something like that, a bit around 500. Herman told me there's about 500 uh, fruit trees in the two orchards. So we still have this orchard right here, which is actually a much smaller orchard. And then there's another row on the other side of that. Clint's gonna keep working with the excavator. I thought the excavator was your favorite thing in the whole world. Uh, the second favorite, other than the Suburban. Well, I, but, but you just told me you were sick of it. You never wanna drive it again. It's, I'm sick of it. He has finally run the excavator so long that he's sick of running the excavator. Uh, which is a great thing to do. Um, I think it's great. He's got a lot of experience on it today. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Clay has not had the experience today, mostly because I'm just letting Clint run run it. Um, Clay will get some experience next time maybe, or in the future. Part of it is because I really don't want any of the trees I've already plarted to be massacred by accident. And Clint has managed to hit one. Only one. Only one. He managed to try to uh, push one over. He didn't realize it was a, he thought it was a, just a piece of wood. It's a good, it's a good long day. We'll be done about 6, 6.30 is when we're going to finish up. Finished up running the excavator. I'll be done with the saw by, as soon as the sun sets. I'm not running a saw in the dark. I'm not crazy. Uh, but speaking of the dark, Clay, you want to show me what you found? I lost something a couple months ago and I have not been able to find it. I looked everywhere. It was my favorite flashlight. And it's called, it's, it's by Olight. Now I know there's other companies out there that are American made. I don't have $300 to spend on a flashlight, but I'll spend $60 on a flashlight. So this is a baton. It's perfect. It fits right on my hat, like a little headlamp and it is nice and bright. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's nice and bright. Clay found it for me. I had thought it was gone. And since Clay found it for me, you get to keep it. That's how it goes. I was already getting prepared to order another one and uh, I got a discount from them on top of one of my flashlights got a, had a recall. And so with the recall, I was gonna end up getting another flashlight just like that. It's the exact same one, except for it's the newer version. So I was gonna have two of them and they were orange. And so uh, you can have my old one since you found it. Okay, buddy? I want you to know that's my favorite flashlight. I've done everything with that flashlight for the last three, almost four years. I got that. That was one of the first expensive, expensive items we bought when we got to the farm as I went and I found some good flashlights and I've been using that for about, probably about three and a half years, almost four years. So it's yours, buddy. We'll see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the, uh, the day that you spent with us and I'll show you right now what this looks like from the air.